day three, we're back out here. Beautiful habitat, beautiful temps. We're just gonna be doing a bit of road cruising today, exploring some of this habitat, the scrub on the side of the road, see what we can find. We've had an absolute ripper the last few days. Yesterday was insane. We got the jungle python, handful of red bellies. We got something else, what else did we get? The jungle, oh the killback, and a killback. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you jump on last week's video, have a look at that one, and hopefully we get some stuff in store for today. We've already found a couple lace monitors. This lace monitor was beautiful. I'll chuck some clips in, but shot straight up a tree. And it's interesting the different color variations from down in Sydney. It was a lot lighter coloring, a lot of yellow patches and yellow spots. I guess that could be because of the temperature difference. They don't have to be so black like down in Sydney to soak up as much heat, but who knows? But anyway, wish us luck and we'll keep going. After wishing farewell to our lace monitor, we've cruised upon our first snake for the day, a lesser black whip snake. Now this snake is part of the Demancia genus, which includes yellow face whip snakes, which are abundant down in Sydney. A lot of the way up the east coast, to be honest. I think off the top of my head, there's about 14 Australian snakes in the Demancia genus, all quite variable. And this is the first time I've ever seen this particular snake, the lesser black whip snake. the beautiful reds and even some blues as he moves through the sun. Beautiful snake. Second snake for the day and our second species of Demantia. Here we've got the Demantia torcata, the collared whip snake. Now another snake I haven't seen before. And unfortunately, the video is not doing this snake justice. The colors on this snake were beautiful. Beautiful blues around the head with patterns incorporating yellows and the body with that reddy orange tinge. It was just a big variation of colors going on in this little snake. You would still see that famous comma around the eye, just like on the yellow face whip snakes. I was very, very happy to stumble across this snake. And there he is, the eastern brown snake, the second most venomous snake, not only in Australia, but in the world. This snake is responsible for the most deaths in Australia, not only due to the venom, but due to them being so abundant in built up areas. Now the death count is still very, very low. There's one or two every couple years if we're lucky or unlucky. You leave these snakes to their own devices, they want nothing to do with you. They'll be on their way back into the bush, back where they came from. They don't want interactions with humans. They want to go about their day eating small mammals and rodents. Normally, if there is a death from a snake in Australia or this particular snake, it's more often than not, it's due to lack of first aid as soon as the bite's been taken. It's people being blase, people not worrying about it, people going home and thinking having a sleep's a good idea. You really do need to get that compression bandage on and ring triple zero, the emergency services ASAP. But how about this snake just putting on that famous defensive display that they're so well known for, standing up, essing up and opening that mouth, flicking that tongue. They are just a stunning snake. This is a snake you would have seen a few times on my channel. Unfortunately, not as often as I like. I wish they popped up more often. Now this Eastern Brown is the biggest one I've ever seen. This thing was as thick as a Coke can and dead set six foot long. I promise you, this thing is nearly as tall as me. It was a seriously impressive snake. You don't come along ones this size and girth all that often. A lot of the Eastern Browns I've encountered, they get a good length, maybe three, four, 
probably four to five foot, but they stay quite slender. Not a big, fat, girthy animal like this snake here. And you can see, he's not chasing us. He's staying well away. He wants nothing to do with us. I'm not running away with the camera. He's just putting on a show to keep me from getting any closer. Because essentially, I'm just bugging him. I'm just hassling him. All he wants to do is go back on his way. These snakes are nothing to worry about unless you go grabbing them and taunting them. A beautiful, beautiful snake that just wants to be left to do its own thing. We're on fire today, guys. Sorry I'm not talking as much as I normally do in my videos. It's got a bit of a... Oh, what's jump? Something's jumping through here, probably a macropod of some sort. Yeah, sorry I'm not talking, showing the excitement as much as I normally do in my videos. Got a bit of a crowd, a bit of an audience, so trying to keep it on the down low. Probably going to be a bit of voiceovers in this video, so hopefully you don't mind. Hopefully it's not too boring, but we're having an absolute cracker today. We've got two different species of whip snake already. Two species that aren't in Sydney as well, so in Sydney we only get the yellow face whip snake. So they're both two new species for me. And also that absolutely huge eastern brown, like what an absolutely huge specimen. Yeah, a fantastic sight at that. I don't think I've seen one with such a big head. But we still need, we still need our coastal taipan. And please, please, let's get a scrub python. If not today, we've got tonight and one more day tomorrow, so all hope's not lost. Let's keep going. In saying what I was saying before, actually, we did drive past a DOR scrub python, also a DOR water python, which, oh, the water python, that would, that would do me. I'd be absolutely over the moon with that. Also a species I've not seen before. One I probably wasn't expecting to see, but unfortunately it was DOR, so hopefully we do come across another one around here somewhere, and these types of creek systems running through these kinds of areas are going to be the perfect place to find them. Well, we've already had a lot of luck today. Obviously, the conditions are good. The snakes are out. And hopefully, it stays that way. It's getting on in the afternoon. Yeah, we'll just have to see. It, things might start to slow down now, or they may come out for their afternoon bask. We'll just have to see what happens. And there she is, our number one target for the day and one of two major targets for the entire trip, the coastal taipan. Now this snake is arguably the third most venomous snake in the world. I think at the moment it's between this particular snake and the western desert taipan. But what a gorgeous snake this is. You can see it's a lot less inclined to hold up the defensive posturing and scare us away than the eastern brown was. This snake more just wants to get away from us. You can see it wants nothing to do with us. It's hiding under itself. It wants to bail into the distance. It's not an aggressive snake when left alone. However, don't be mistaken, this snake is no slouch. They are big, springy snakes. If they want to strike, they'll jump up off the ground, chest height, head height and they're extremely accurate. They will land a bite exactly where they are aiming to. And this is essential when they're out in the bush catching rodents, small mammals, and anything alike. Just like our brown snake, this was another huge snake. Almost just as thick and definitely just as long, if not longer. A huge, huge individual. Now these guys are very prevalent up in the North Queensland sugarcane farms. They use rat burrows, they flush out the rats, eat the rats, and essentially keep the rodent population down. It's a very handy snake to keep around. <laughs> <laughs> 